Hey everyone, I'm Joe Garcia, the infamous Joe G, and this is a part one video in a multi-part series surrounding how you can use Postman and no-code development with CyberArk. And so in this very first part, we're gonna take it all the way back to the beginning. We're gonna assume no knowledge of Postman collections, assume that you haven't even downloaded or installed any Postman API clients yet, and I'm gonna tell you, what is a Postman collection, how you can find CyberArk's Postman collection, how you can install and configure the Postman API client on your local host, or if you're unable to install that API client because it's not approved software in your organization, how you can use Postman's new feature, Postman Web, to get dangerous in your browser today. The first way is through a short link at cybr.rocks forward slash in all caps Rust API. And this will redirect us to where the Postman collection is made publicly available for everyone to view. And you can view this in your browser. So here we have uh, the Postman website that we've been redirected to. We have our initial documentation for the collection. The left sidebar, we have our different Rust APIs for CyberArk that we can choose from to drill down to. Up at the top, we have an environment. We'll talk about environment templates and what they are once we get this collection into the Postman API client. You can choose a layout if the double column doesn't work for you, but I don't really think that there's any need to change this at all. And then finally is a language and you can choose from any of these languages and you'll get an example in this right sidebar that's kind of grayed out right now as we start to view these different endpoints. Now I know a lot of people watching this video probably like PowerShell or curl, so I'm gonna stick with curl for simplicity, but just know that PowerShell's REST method is supported. Uh, if you're into Python, two methods are supported there. Uh, other methods in shell, if curl isn't available, maybe wget is. You know, it's usually one of those two are available there. Uh, but a lot of different uh, languages here based on what you like to do that you can choose from. So I'm gonna keep it on curl for now uh, throughout this. Uh, you can read through this documentation here. It'll usually have the latest updated version for when I updated the Postman collection. Also some cool little getting started uh, guides. This video will appear as a link here. So if you happen to get it through this route, you already know about how to get to our collection that's publicly available. So congratulations, you found the YouTube video related to it. Um, but each of the APIs that are documented are listed here by product. So we can expand out the privileged access manager and see that it is even further organized into different categories and then we can expand out what we wanna do, like authentication is obviously the first thing we're going to need to do in order to be able to interact with the API. So we can expand that out and start to see the different ways we can send a logon request over the API for different types of authentication. And when we click on these, it'll actually jump down to it in the, uh, in the website and display the documentation information that is set up for this particular endpoint. So this is copied from our documentation website at docs.cyberarc.com. So this will be the same information that you'll see there uh, with an example of what the URL would look like that the, uh, the endpoint is, is available at, what some values would look like in the body. And then also again, because we chose curl as our language, we have curl in the right side that we can just copy the snippet, walk away with, and use. Now we can also, as I mentioned before, change that to PowerShell. It'll just update in place to PowerShell and now we can copy this and use that instead. So like I'd mentioned, I'm gonna keep it on curl, so I'm gonna bump back over there. But really cool for if you just needed to get an idea of what an endpoint looks like in a certain language, don't necessarily need an API client to actually uh, uh, send those requests over the network and, and deal with the responses and stuff. You're just trying to get a quick snippet, come to the website, copy in whatever language you want, modify it from there. Now you will notice that there are a couple values here that are pre-populated. These values are not required for the body, right? Just the key information on the left side 
is required, the values are up to you to add. Where these values are coming from is from what Postman calls an environment template. And this environment template that is set is one that comes by default with some default values so you can see these populated. We can also choose no environment if we don't want those values populated and it'll remove those values and you'll see just the variable name that I'm using in the collection in order to populate those in the documentation. So these are variable names, including the squiggly brackets, right? Kind of looks like a Jinja variable in a way, if you're familiar with Jinja variables in other languages. Uh, but these get replaced by the values of the environment template if an environment template is chosen. Otherwise, you need to remove this and then plain text type in your username, type in your password, you know, set this to true or false. So you can see now why it's already beneficial to be sure that you use the environment template and modify it because it will in fact mask your passwords that are sensitive data or anything else you mark as sensitive data. So that way it's not viewable through documentation or even through the environment template that you're setting. Just further, increases the security and masking of sensitive data that may be used by this API. So very cool uh, way of just dealing with it in the website, not needing to download anything to our local host or install anything. But let's say that we did want to load this into an API client. We didn't want to have to create any code or run any scripts. We want to have something that can act as a middleman and do that for us so that we can test everything out without needing to type a lick of code. And what we would do then is in the upper right hand corner here, click run in postman. When we run in postman, it will ask us a couple questions here. We can either install a desktop app and import the collection into that desktop app. Uh, this would obviously require the ability for you as a user to install applications on your endpoint. And some enterprises don't allow you to install your own applications unless they go through an approval process first. If that's the case, then you would want to select Postman Web to fork. And that will fork the collection, allow it to be modified by you in Postman Web, uh, and you can use it there instead of needing to install any desk desktop app here locally. We'll take a look at a Postman web to fork here in a, a little bit later. So for now, I'm going to select Postman desktop app to import. But before I click that, I need to get the app. I don't even have the app yet. So I'm going to click this link down here for get the app. And in this new window, I'm going to make sure I download the proper version for Windows. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, start the installer and get it installed. And then we can go back and import that collection here. So when the app launches for the first time, as you saw there, uh, it asked if I wanted to sign in or not. I am going to sign in. Uh, however, you don't necessarily need to. You can skip signing in and immediately jump into the application. Let me go ahead and complete my authentication here, and we'll be right back. All right, now that I've signed in, it's going to ask me if I want to open links from this website you know, identity.getpostman.com in the application. So in order for that authentication to take, I need to do that. Um, and so that'll then log me in in the application. Awesome. So here we have my initial login page. I have workspaces already. Uh, if we go to my workspace here, I have already got the public REST API imported over here. Um, what I'm going to do because as I edit this REST API or play with it for the sake of this video, it's going to actually make public changes. I'm going to create a fork of this so that I don't mess with it at all. You don't necessarily need to do this. This is just for my YouTube video. So this is a part that you don't need to worry about. Uh, we'll fork it 
and then I'll be able to safely use that fork instead of making any real-time changes to what's available out publicly. Again, this will not affect you. So now that I have the collection here, I can expand it out and see it matches what I was seeing in the left sidebar. I've got my documentation here ready to go. I can close that out, close out the overview, expand out Privileged Access Manager, and I can start messing with all of this now. I've got the Postman API client app installed on my local host. Uh, I can access different settings in the file and make modifications to those settings. For example, if you are uh, dealing with a self-signed certificate, you will not want to do SSL certificate verification, so you'll want this off. If you're trying to test uh, your API requests in a production type scenario to see how that would play out, definitely click this on. You will want to make sure that SSL certificate verification is turned on at that point. Also, if at any time you're trying to test client certificate authentication with something like our central credential provider, for example, there is a certificates tab here that you can go to, click on add certificate, and add the certificate here with the URL for the host set to uh, where the web service for the central credential provider is located. Any requests to that host will then have the client certificate that you add here included in all of those requests so that you can complete that client certificate authentication. As for themes, I'm getting blinded here, so I'm gonna switch over to dark to make things a little bit easier on my eyes and hopefully on yours too. But now we can see with the backdrop of the browser uh, that we are working in an application and it doesn't run together. Kind of gives me that separation for me to understand whether I'm on the website or whether I'm on the app because the website will be white and in light mode. Uh, we can make the application dark mode here. So also, uh, when I imported this collection, what also came along with it is that environment template I was talking about before. And you can see up here in the upper right-hand corner right now, I have no environment listed. I'm going to want to take that drop-down box. And I do have a lot more than probably you'll see, but the one you will be given by way of importing the collection is CyberArk Environment. So we can select that. And then we can click on this Quick Look button here for the environment and be able to see that, yes, in fact, it is populated with variables that will be used throughout our process uh, with current values set to basically, you know, the default uh, information uh, that comes along with this. All of this is editable. You can see the little pencil popping up next to it. Uh, so we can make changes to these values as we need to for our own environment. And this saves us the time of needing to copy and paste the same, you know, uh, base URL for where our PVWA lives into each of these endpoints, it will instead just use the value applied to this variable. And it makes things a lot easier to work with in Postman when we could be working with a multitude of these endpoints here that we're going to be sending requests for. So that's how you get it from the short link into the API client. Let's take a quick look at another way someone may find the CyberArk REST API on Postman if you didn't happen to get the short link or direct link to the collection like I had used here. In that case, what will happen is uh, you would probably search on Google or Bing or whatever your favorite search engine is uh, for CyberArk Postman REST API. When you search for this, a couple options will come up. Obviously, the CyberArk website will be first with its REST API information. But there, right second to that is the, uh, the, what, what's called a public workspace that contains the collection. And this is Postman verbiage that I'm using here. Uh, but when you click it, you'll notice things are a little bit different here. Uh, we have a view of what looks like a web-based API client instead of the documentation that we see here where it's completely taking over the entire browser. And we're just looking at documentation more so than we are actually trying to play with any requests and send them out through an API client. So this is the collection 
online and the documentation associated with that collection. What this is, is Postman Web and showing a public workspace that includes the collection for you to use, as well as if we click on environments, there's our CyberArk environment as well. So just a little bit different way that Postman created came out recently with that may be throwing some people through a loop because not only do they have the API client that you download and install on your local host, uh, but now they also have this Postman web uh, that you can interact with things with. And so the way we're going to take care of this in, in this situation is we're going to need to do a fork from this. So if you're looking at a view like this in the web where it's an API client, and you have uh, the, the REST API information here, what you're going to want to do is while selecting the CyberArk REST API, click on fork here, and it'll fork over to Postman Web for you in your own workspace. And then also on environments, when you select the CyberArk environment, you're also going to want to select fork there as well. Doing both of these on both of those, the collection and the environment, will fork these into your own workspace so that what we're going to continue doing in the API client that I downloaded, you can follow along now and do it from within Postman Web. So those are the only differences there, right? Either you're going to load it up in the API client directly from the collection, and that's going to run on your local host, or you're going to use it in Postman Web, which is another option, in which case you will be taken to the CyberArk community's public workspace, and you'll need to make sure that everything gets forked over to my workspace by clicking those fork buttons. Once that happens, just like we saw in the API client here where I have all of my different collections, and plus the one I forked for YouTube, the same shows here. So this would be my fork that I had created for YouTube, and I can do the same actions uh, here as I can do in the API client, just different places uh, where that application, that API client is being hosted from. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how to uh, first find, right, the Postman collection on the internet, whether it's the straight collection or you're going through Postman Web in order to access it, how you can install and configure the Postman API client that's downloaded and installed, as well as get your collection imported over, get your environment set, and then also how you can do the same to get uh, similar access to the collection and in, 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 in the uh, environment template within Postman Web, which is a new feature of Postman. In the next section, we'll go ahead and take a look at what it takes to get requests sent off and how we can start to utilize that environment template a little bit more to make our lives a lot simpler. Well, everybody, I hope you enjoyed part one in how to use Postman for no-code development with CyberArk. In part two, we'll go a little bit deeper than we did in this video. We'll start to send off some API requests to CyberArk, see how we can use those environment templates to our benefit, and start to actually get some work done in the API with CyberArk. So until then, stay secure.